Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. I'm here at Diamondback's main uh, manufacturing facility in Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania right now. I flew in yesterday. We're gonna get into like a little tour here, kind of just see what's going on in this big giant building. Uh, but today, today, we're giving away the Freedom Tremor. So Zach and I think his family, maybe just Zach by himself, it's coming down. I think he's gonna be here in about 15 minutes. So we gotta get a couple things ready. Uh, some of the Diamondback crew, they're working right now. We're gonna come out, greet him. You're gonna see all that. So we'll get that into a video here in a second. But the truck is here. We have it, so we're gonna pull it out these doors and give it away. It's an active working in this manufacturing facility. So it'll be pretty loud. But here's the baby. I forgot, I haven't seen it in, you know, a month or two now. Forgot how just massive this truck is. So we're gonna pull it out. Um, so probably we're just gonna cut over to Zach showing up and pulling the truck out. So then hopefully I'll sit down and talk to Zach for a little bit, uh, talk about the truck, kind of his plans for the truck, let you get to know him for a little, and then I'll talk more. I'm just kind of rushed right now because we're getting some stuff set up. So this is Diamondbacks kind of lobby area. And then we'll walk around, show you the rest, give you some updates on everything. We're gonna put the actual, so this whole thing was a giveaway uh, and a charity event really for A21, so anti-human trafficking organization. So this video we're really just talking about, uh, we're giving, literally giving away the truck here, so you're gonna drive off, we're gonna say goodbye, I'm gonna shed a tear, talk about Diamondback, and then I'll do a follow-up video kind of breaking down the campaign, money raised, everything like that. Okay, so actually, I'm just gonna give you everything in this video. That's probably why this video is pretty long. Uh, I'll put chapters down below you so you can skip ahead to whatever you care about, but I implore you to watch the whole thing because I think it is fascinating. This has been the project, probably the project that I've been most proud to be a part of in my whole life, and this is the conclusion to it. So I'd be honored if you watched the whole thing but if not, feel free to skip around. So this whole thing, the Freedom Tremor Project, build a truck, give it away, raise a bunch of money for charity, spearheaded by Diamondback and, and myself. I kind of had the idea and Diamondback said, we'll be the muscle behind it. So huge thanks to Diamondback and there were so many people involved, so many companies involved in this project, I had to write them down. So I'm actually gonna read it off a list. Huge thank you. To all of you, I just didn't want to miss anyone, and I probably still did miss someone, so I apologize if I did. But Diamondback covers KC highlights for providing all the lights, front runner outfitters for the racks, Dometic for the, it has a refrigerator in the center console, the Freedom Tremor does. Pelican for the cases, Fieldcraft Survival, thanks Mike G. I Camper for the tent, BF Goodrich for those juicy, juicy 39 inch KM3s, Black Rhino for providing the wheels, Multicam with the Multicam Black vinyl wrap on there, Rig Supply for the swing out, Fab Fours for the bumper and the big cutout flare so we could fit those massive tires, True Automotive for putting in the <laughs> putting in the work to install those fender flares actually. Smitty built and four wheel parts for hooking up the leveling kit and the winch as well. Max tracks for the recovery boards, cargo ease for that pull out slide so you can access that giant bed. Built right industries for a variety of things to include the rear molly panels inside of the bed. 67 designs for their sweet phone mount up front. And Yakima for the road shower and rear uh, rear rack system. There's probably more. Write me a letter if I missed you, and I'm sorry. But thank you to all those companies. Uh, basically, I hit these companies up and told them about the project, and every company I listed was like, whatever you need, man. We are just, we're stoked to be a part of this project. Awesome, thank you. So yeah, this project that I've been working on for a year, well, it's, it's done now, but I was working on it for a year, basically, a, longer than a year if we're talking planning. Planning and logistics happened before I even had the truck, but Diamondback bought the truck about a year until we give it away and now, now it's done. So we started this project with a few goals in mind. 
a few very important goals in mind. One was probably the least important goal in mind. We wanted to build a really, really cool truck. Basically, my dream adventure truck. And then once I kind of had it built out, we, we, would, we would have some fun with it and we would take it to some shows and, and, and show it off. And then we would give it away. And one lucky winner, which we'll get into soon, Zach, congrats, would win the truck. I was hoping that it was a sub subscriber of mine at the very least, not some random guy that saw an ad or something. And it was. So that was, that was one of the goals. Another goal was, well, the whole purpose of this was to kind of raise awareness and raise money so we could actually help fight modern slavery, uh, help fight for freedom for those that have been kidnapped, sold, born into slavery. Uh, so we partnered with an organization called A21, whose sole mission in life is to end slavery. And thus, the Freedom Tremor was born. Freedom obvious reasons. Tremor, because it's a Ford F-250 Tremor. The Freedom Tremor. So we did all those things and I'm going to get into how much money we raised and how much impact we had here in a little bit. So we started with no idea how to run a giveaway. Uh, so Diamondback team went to work, hired lawyers, <laughs> attorneys, all whatever, whatever the people they hire to figure out all the legal mumbo jumbo because Raffles and giveaways are highly, highly, highly regulated, and we wanted to make sure we did this right. So that took months and months of our lives, not really mine as much as Diamondback's lives, so thank you guys for doing that, but months and months of their lives, thousands and thousands of dollars to get this thing all dialed in. We, we learned so much along the way. We made so many mistakes, and if we do it again, maybe we will. It's going to be so much better uh, than this time. So... We had no clue what we're doing. Now we kind of do. Now, you know, hindsight, we kind of know. We, we, we took a lot of notes, so we can kind of do it better. And there's a lot of weird stuff, like uh, a, a big one was, why can't we just donate money? Why do we have to buy a product? And that was just because of regulations. You have to be a very specific nonprofit registered in like every state and yada, 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 in order to just collect uh a monetary donation that can be passed straight through, but that's obviously the most efficient way to raise charity. Uh, and none of this thing was for profit. So if we do it again, we're gonna figure out how to do that right there, rather than spend all this money on merch and products and hoodies, hoodies are expensive to ship out. So that way we can maximize the amount of money raised. But basically over the course of the year, we exposed 14 million people there's 14 million impressions with this, with this project. So hopefully those people at least were exposed in some little way to the very real issue of, of human slavery, human trafficking and modern day slavery. So it was a big awareness project and we raised some awareness via 14 million people. There were 500,000 or more people that like actually shared posts and commented and did all this other stuff that were like actually physically engaged. So that's amazing, and there were 10,000, over, over 10,000 of you actually purchased something to help support the cause. And, you know, to, to try and win the truck as well, I'm sure, but to help support the cause, over 10,000 of you. So thank you to all of those 10,000 of you. I, I was hoping for more, I was hoping for more, but thank you to the 10,000 plus of you that did support the cause. So we raised a ton of money and I'm gonna tell you how much money, but to give you an idea, like most giveaway things you see online, it's like you, you, raise, you, you, you raise this much money and then this much money is what your costs are, right? So you're left with this much money and most companies then take their profits from that and the few companies out there that actually donate to a charity, good on you for doing that, they're just donating like this much of the proceeds, a very small percentage of that. And I'm not digging on them. It's so, so sick. Thank you so much for donating to charities. But we took a different approach and we didn't take any profit. So actually kind of how, how ours went was we raised this much money and we had to do some stuff. Obviously there's some costs. Diamondback bought the truck. Ford, maybe you, could, maybe you could toss us a truck next time. Diamondback bought the truck, paid for a bunch of legal fees, paid for a bunch of advertising, paid for a bunch of stuff, uh, spent a ton of money and then all of the stuff, like I said, hoodies, shirts, hats, they all cost a lot of money. And then we were left with this. And that would have normally been 
how much we donated because we're not taking any profit. So we would have been left with that. And that would have been the, the, that would have been how much we donated. And that would have been sick. But Diamondback ate a bunch of those costs, like covered a bunch of those costs as well as kind of their donation towards the cause. So rather than taking a profit, they reversed net negative profit. <laughs> and this is what we came up with. This is the number that we donated. And it was over $200,000. It was, what is the exact number? 201 and 37, 201,037 dollars we donated. So that is the actual throughput of the money that this, this whole project raised. So that's what we're giving to A21. And I'm stoked on that. I wished for more. I'm not going to lie. I wished for more. I wanted to, I wanted to write a $500,000 check to A21, but $200,000 is no slash. And again, we made so many mistakes and did so many things wrong. So thank you guys for helping us raise $200,000, a little more than $200,000 that's going to go directly to A21. Um, so we hopped on a call to, with A21. We're like, hey, we're going to send you $200,000. We didn't do a big thing about it. We didn't go over there, take a bunch of publicity photos with a big check or anything like that. We thought about it, but we didn't. And we just donated the money. But we talked to them because we were kind of curious, where's this money? Like what? Two hundred thousand dollars is a pretty big chunk of change. What's that? Gonna, like, what's it? What's it going to do in the end? Uh, and A twenty one, I don't know how much of this information I can talk about, but they they have they spend a lot of money. They're a big organization that does a lot of stuff that has their hands in all kinds of different things. I implore you to go to a twenty one dot org and find out more because they are an amazing organization. But we were kind of just like, so what is like two hundred thousand? Like, do you have anything that like two hundred thousand? Like, what does that what does that do? And they told us some stuff. They were just like, well, here's some stuff that's kind of in that range. Uh, we, have, we have a program, one of our most impactful programs, one of the most important things that we do at A21 that benefits a countless number of lives is we have a 24-7 hotline uh, for people that, are, that have fallen into this, for people that are reporting this, for, for really any, anything to do with, with human trafficking or those that are surviving it or trying to get out of it. A 24-7 hotline manned by real people. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they said the cost, what that costs them is about $140,000 a year. So what we raised covers more than a year of that 24-7 hotline that is affecting helping so many people. Uh, they said, conveniently, we have another program that's like one of the most important programs. I'm going to read it. They talk about it on the website. I'm going to read it for you as to not butcher it, but it's a child advocacy center, and it is a safe environment for children coming out of exploitation that provides holistic aftercare services and uses a child victim-centered approach to collect a child's testimony for court that avoids additional trauma to the child. So basically, they're helping all these kids that they save from human trafficking. They, they save these kids that were slaved, that were slaves, that were slaves, and they bring them in and they, they kind of help rehabilitate them. And an important part about this, uh, and I, I did a whole ride along. If I remember it, I'll link it up here. But we talked about what A21 actually does, and we dove deep. So if you're interested in that and like what everything they do, go up there. But basically... A big part of it is prosecuting these sick, 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 sick people that are going to burn in hell forever in court to actually get them punished. So part of that is getting these, child, these children's testimonies. And to get those testimonies, you want to put them in a really safe and comfortable place because they're basically reliving these horrible atrocities. Uh, so this center that, that does that costs $200,000 a year to run. So our $200,000 covers that entire child advocacy center. And I just wanted to talk about that stuff because I thought it was cool. I thought, I thought it was nice to like actually see the impact of your money at this organization. Uh, granted, it could go to anything. It could go to the attorneys that are prosecuting these people. It could go to the, all of the documentaries and the films that they make to help raise awareness, all the educational first responder type resources that they give out to help identify uh, when people come into the hospital, like, oh, that's, that looks like a human trafficking case. They do all this kind of stuff. And our money could go to any of it, honestly. So I would love to hear you like comment down below what we should tell them that we want this money to go to. Like, 
Do we just want to put in the general fund and a little bit goes to everywhere? Or do we want to have all this money and just, let's just say, let's fund that child advocacy center for a year. I want to know your thoughts because I just think it's kind of cool. All this money is because of you guys. Um, it's not because of me. Granted, I've, I've donated money separately, but I wasn't allowed to enter the giveaway. So all of this money that we're donating is from you guys. So I, I feel like you should just, you should let us know where, where we should put that money um, or if it should just go into the general fund and they'll just use it the best they can. Uh, I thought that was cool. Wanted to share it with you. Um, so yeah. And again, for more info, if you want to donate to A21 directly, a21.org. Again, we, we've talked to them quite a bit at this point. Diamondback did a ton of due diligence before we even chose them as an organization. They're solid. If you want to donate some money to help end human trafficking, help end modern day slavery, I cannot recommend them enough. So yeah, and we'll go, let's go back. While we're talking, while we're rambling, let's go back a little further. So Diamondback and me, how did this, how did this project come into existence? And Diamondback, actually Andy over at Diamondback wrote an excellent blog, probably a couple of them at this point that's on Diamondback's website, diamondbackcovers.com. They have a little, maybe it's called Field Notes or something. They have a little blog section. Check it out. They have a lot of really cool content from, from hunting to survival to preparedness. And we talk about the Freedom Tremor Project there as well. So Andy actually did an excellent blog. I'll link it down below. He puts things into words better than I can. But it kind of spawned from, let's go way back. I bought my Toyota Tacoma in 2016. One of the first mods, I think I did like wheels and tires first maybe, but then the next mod to the truck was putting a Diamondback cover on the truck. I didn't know Diamondback at the time. I didn't know anyone there. I didn't know anything about the company. I just said, that is a cool cover to, you know, provide security and whatever for, for guns and everything that I put in it. And then I kind of started using it in weird ways and I put a rack system on it. I got one on Amazon. I broke one. I, anyway, the, the, I love the product. I came to love the company and we came to kind of work together through the years, in the last couple of years, we kind of worked together. And basically a year, a year and a half ago or so at this point, Diamondback was like, you know, let's do something. Like, you're a cool guy. <laughs> We're a cool company. Do you have any ideas? And I was like, you know what? Let me think about that and I'll get back to you. And I thought about it. And I said, you know what? It's cool to, it's cool to have some fun and, with, with trucks. It's cool to go camping. It's cool to adventure. It's cool to build really cool things. Uh, but what's cooler is like helping people that need help. And I have personally kind of had a heart for human trafficking for, for a long time. There's no interesting story about it. I wasn't saved from human trafficking or anything like that. I was just exposed to it at my church while I was volunteering, setting up for this thing and learned about it. It was over a decade ago and I've been in, into it ever since, just like I've had a heart for it ever since. So I pitched that at Diamondback and I said, let's like, let's do something impactful. If you're into it, I would love to help fight human trafficking. And Diamondback said, you know what? Interesting cause. We hadn't thought about that. We're thinking, you know, like veterans cause or, or, you know, an off-road organization or, or whatever. And I was like, that's cool. We could do that. And they're like, screw that, man. Like what you said sounds like the best expenditure of resources that we could ever imagine. And they jumped on board. They, they, they were all in for this cause. And that's how the Freedom Tremor project started. They're like, you know what? We're, we're, we're an American company. We're made in America. We are America. We are freedom. And we're going to fight for freedom. <laughs> and I'm going to get emotional talking about it. But basically, they got on board. And the rest is history, so to speak. And it is history because the project has come to a close. Whew. Couldn't be prouder of it though. So that's kind of the history of it. And it's kind of awesome to see because when I first got my Diamondback co cover, I didn't really know, I didn't know much about Diamondback as, as a company, but now I know like at the time there were only a couple dozen, I think there were only a couple dozen employees or something at that time, like when I first got it. They're like relatively small company. Uh, and I actually went and saw the building that they used to operate out of. This just kind of, uh, I don't want to, offend anyone. What kind of ghetto building out there? Now they have this like really legit 
giant manufacturing facility and they have, I, I could be wrong, don't quote me on this, I think they have like 150 employees or so, but they, 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 they've come a long way since I first even knew about them. And it's awesome that just like a solid, good company with a good group of guys uh, kind of heading things up there is, is doing really well. So I couldn't be, couldn't be prouder, couldn't be prouder of this relationship. But we did go on a tour of the facility that I'm gonna show you just a little bit of at the end of this video. But I've been rambling for a while, so let's just get into actually we gave away the truck, so check it out. Good seeing you. Hey, Mike, great to meet you. Me too, man. How's the trip? Oh, man. And you talked with blast, Brandon yeah. a bunch, Brandon. and we have a bunch of our team members, not all of them, but a bunch uh, here to greet you. Hey, great to meet yeah. you guys. Thanks for, uh, thanks for making the trip up. Good yeah, thank you so for much down, for making this happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks yeah. for the support. You know Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've <laughs> been watching you for a year or two on, uh, yeah, on YouTube. So here's but. Diamondback. This is where uh, all the magic happens, so to speak. We have the truck behind closed doors, which I'll pull out for you here in a second. <laughs> you excited? Can't wait to see it, yeah. Stoked? Awesome, yeah, man. Been... Well, I really appreciate the support. I know you, what did you get? Did, did you get a patch? It's always for a great cause, and I'm, yeah, have, have my 25 bucks. Next thing you know, I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, so we were on that call, and you, did you think it was like you were being punked or anything? You never, you never expect to pick up the phone call. I was out in the, the middle of the woods, and I pick up the phone call, and, and sure enough. Yeah, uh, yeah you were out of the crazy, range, crazy, yeah. shooting or something at the time? That's yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, I don't know. Should I go get the truck? Is it yeah, time? You want to look at it? You don't have to. You don't. Yeah. You still, you sure? You, you sure you want the truck? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll go get it. Uh, be right back with it. Sit tight. <laughs> okay. That looks It's a big truck. <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> oh man, that's amazing. Just, just opening the bay doors there, it's and the, the lights coming on. It's like the the super villains vehicle being revealed. <laughs> it was oh man. Oh yeah, everyone's yeah. driving like jacked up trucks around North Carolina, but yeah. I think I think I got them all beat now. That's awesome, man. <laughs> but, yeah, so it's got so. the. Full wrap, obviously multi-cam black, 39 inch BFGs. We got the big Fab Fours bumper on front, 12,000 pound winch, KC lights all around the place with some, a switch controller inside. We got the front runner roof rack on top and some Pelican cases. Obviously the Diamondback HD <laughs> around back. Got some Max tracks, rooftop tent, high camper sky camp. Little road shower. This is an old shovel. You don't have to keep it. My fans were I like, was, you should, I was you hoping should show it. it. You should, you should <laughs> include your old beater shovel. It's, uh, it's got some rust on it. I was hoping it, it would come with a shovel. Yeah. And then it, we got a little oh, tire man. that swings open and a little cargo. He's in here. I'll actually show you real quick. So we got this baby, full size spare, obviously. And then this whole thing pulls out so you can load it with all your rifles oh, and gears and everything and get access to Perfect. it all. So. Your, your channel didn't do it justice. Like, this is a beautiful truck. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> That's what they say. They're like, oh, it looks, it looks so much better in real life. I'm like, yeah, guess I'll get better really at photography and videography then. But yeah, this is it, man. I'm gonna break it in on the way down. I brought some camping stuff. I'm gonna... Awesome. So you're gonna do a little camping yeah, a little, on little, the drive back down? Yeah, just Stop for a day or, day or two on the way down and, and give, break her in. Here you go. This is it. This is the moment. <laughs> give me those keys. All right, man. Oh, man. Cool Congrats. Oh, Thanks man. Thanks for the support. Hey, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. It and then we got a little more. We got a little more for it's, you, it's too. for oil changes and <laughs> tires. And tires, yeah. That's for uh, that's oh, pretty man, big so. check. Hey, man. Thanks a ton. Really? No, thank you guys. Thank you guys. I'm, I'm honestly just glad I was able to support in my little way the... Uh, the charity. So. Yeah, it all added up. Words, words can't express how grateful I am for this. Thank you guys so much. You feel That's the awesome. same way about you. Cool guys, so this is Zach, and I just kinda 
we've been we've been chatting for a while now and i wanted to give zach a little opportunity to kind of talk about himself yeah sure plans for the truck you could follow the journey he actually just made an instagram <laughs> account just made it like yesterday yeah, probably I, so yeah, on the way down here freedom underscore tremor freedom yeah. underscore tremor i'll link to it down below i'll put it down here so follow along with his journey so so Zach, tell tell us a little about yourself. Hey, yeah, sure. Um, so I'm I'm currently an active duty uh, Marine down in uh, North Carolina. I've been in for about ten years, and uh, I actually started following you uh, when I was looking into trucks and Tacomas and all that stuff. Sweet. And uh, and I saw current Tacoma owner. Current Tacoma owner. Yeah. Um, not for much longer. I think we're gonna. Yeah, not much longer. I don't have the driveway space. Now current current, current Tremor yeah. owner. Current F two fifty owner. Yeah. But uh, I, I saw he was doing a giveaway for uh, for A21, and mm -hmm. I, I just I really liked the message. I looked into the into the charity, and so I'm like, yeah, right. I'll give him 25 bucks. Yeah. Uh, got got one of those little patches come my way, and I got the truck before the patch. Yeah, yeah. He's getting the <laughs> truck before he got a patch. Just like the message, so uh, bought bought the patch, and I got a phone call about a month later. Uh, I was I was out uh, shooting guns with a buddy, and I uh, got a phone call. Hey. Uh, you remember buying a buying a patch? I was like, no way. Yeah. No way. And oh, it was. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. a real shock. Me was, and a couple of the team on Diamondback called him up, and he's like, no way. Like you know, it was it's heartwarming. It was very heartwarming time. Yeah. But yeah, so you, you won. Think? Yeah. You told your wife. She was like, no way. She she's not gonna believe it until I drive home with with the truck. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Awesome. And um, then, so, wife and, and a small one, small daughter. Yeah, we have uh, a little two-and-a-half-year-old daughter at home. So the video kind of got cut out, and like my usual procrastinating self, I'm supposed to upload this video today, and I was just going through the footage and didn't have some of what I needed. But Zach went on to talk about his, his family, uh, his wife and his two-and-a-half-year-old two two daughter, and they've never been camping since she was born just because life you know life gets busy and he was actually building out his Tacoma to like he bought the Tacoma with the intention he watched my watch my channel when he got the Tacoma and he was tr trying to get to a place to build out his Tacoma so he could kind of go out camping and and life right but now there's no excuses so he's taking his family out camping his two big dogs he's got two giant Weimaraners so the big truck and the big I camp or sky camp be a, be a great kind of base camp for them to get out on some adventures. Furthermore, he's actually, so he's a Marine uh, right now and he's he's been a Marine for a decade and he's gonna be getting out soon and putting everything he's kind of learned and, and given back in a sense and starting a, a training company. And his training company is gonna be teaching like reconnaissance and small unit tactics, kind of like very interesting guy. So I'll leave links to all of his stuff down below and he started an Instagram, like I think we mentioned, freedom underscore tremor, and you can follow along the journey. So he actually, he picked up the truck, he came, got the truck, he bought, brought a bunch of camping equipment, just actually just a little bit, like a sleeping bag and a jet boil or something, and he actually camped on the way back to North Carolina from Pennsylvania. And it was so cool because basically that night, from when he took the truck, he went and he, he camped in the snow. Actually, he's got pictures of his first night. Uh, the first night that he owned the truck, he's out camping in it already. So I was really stoked to see that. So congrats to Zach. Again, thank you every, everyone else for entering, but if you wanna follow along the journeys, I'll leave his info down below. So then before Zach took the truck away, Zach's parents actually drove him out and Zach and his parents, all engineers, Myself, not an engineer, but kind of have an engineer mind. I did go to engineering school for a little bit. Like I'm, I'm just a nerd in general. Love seeing facilities and tours. You've, you've seen some of them on my channel. So we absolutely loved just kind of touring the facility. And Kirk, sorry, Kirk, the audio wasn't great. So I didn't bother trying to splice in a bunch of the stuff you were talking about. But Kirk gave us a tour. Um, kind of just told us everything about what was going on there. And it was awesome to see all of the people behind the company that I've kind of grown to love over the years. Uh, they have a really interesting thing. That, so they have basically two crews, like the morning crew and the afternoon crew. I, I don't even know if I should talk about this. Diamondback, sorry if I'm not supposed to. But their morning crew comes in, and I think they're off at like 11. So they come in at like, 
I don't know, five or six or maybe seven. I don't even know. They don't work super long shifts, but they come in in the morning. They're off by 11 and they have the rest of the day off, which is awesome. And the second crew comes in, I believe at 11 again, I could be wrong on this and goes till I think five and they're off at five. And these full-time employees only actually work like a 35 hour shift. I believe again, I could be butchering this, but how is it explained to me and how I talk to a lot of the employees are just like, we love this schedule. We love working here. And it was really cool just to see like a bunch of happy workers making an awesome product right there in Pennsylvania. So that was stoked. But also I have super nerded out on all the, the benders and the laser cutters and everything. They had they, even like the, the packaging machine, they had these like vacuum arms that came down and like suctioned it up. And just to see the amount of product they were moving out per day, basically two bay doors of semis that were just like getting carted in. I, I, I walked through the facility several times and it was like they were loading them all day. It was, it was crazy. So uh, kudos to Diamondback for, for kind of crushing it. And some of the jobs there, they went to automation. So there, there's some robots working there as well. And the interesting thing that I was kind of talking to them about is that they really got robots to handle the tasks that were either just very mundane or repetitive or that just people absolutely hated. Like they used to have a guy in a paint booth just painting all day, texturing this nasty, ruggedized, you know, like Linex type material on these covers. And they're basically like, they go in and they come out and they're just covered head to toe in just like black paint and dust and disgustingness. So they said, let's find a robot to do that task. And so they have this like crazy robot arm painting and I'm sure the quality probably has gone up because it's a robot and nobody has to do that horrible task. So they have some stuff like that that I thought was really interesting there as well. So I had an idea that they were a cool company from just kind of working with them and talking to, you know, largely their marketing team and whatnot, but actually being there and seeing the people that are actually making the product was just, it was an awesome experience and just, I don't know, just again, made me stoked just to be friends with Diamondback. And so that's it. That's it. This chapter of my life, the Freedom Tremor Saga, has come to a close. And really, just from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for being involved in it. No thank you to those who weren't involved in it, you slackers. If we do it again, you better get on board. But thank you so much to everyone that, that donated, that bought something for the cause. People have asked. I forgot to mention it. When's this stuff going to ship? On, on the product page when you ordered, it said everything will ship four to six weeks after the giveaway ends because we didn't want to make 10,000 t-shirts and only sell 2,000 of them. So we, we made them. You know, We found out how many we need to make to be most efficient again to, to donate the maximum amount of money as we could, and we made those. So I don't know how many t-shirts we sold. We'll say we sold 1,000 t-shirts, so we made 1,000 t-shirts, and then we're shipping them. So it took a little bit because, again, we're doing it different than a lot of people do giveaways. So thank you so much for your patience, but your stuff should have shipped by now. If not, it'll ship in the next few days. So that'll be coming soon. Thank you for every other company that was involved uh, in the journey. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know, be like, that thing sucked, or you could have done this so much better, or why didn't you think about doing this, or why didn't you do that, or for the next one, you should give away this truck, or whatever. I wanna hear your thoughts because again, like I said earlier, this was like one of the proudest projects that I've been a part of. And maybe we'll do more and I'll have like a lot of, I'll have a lot of proud moments in my life and maybe together as a big family, we can kind of help make an impact. I'm not trying to make a bunch of money off of giveaways, but maybe we can make an impact on people's, people's lives and, and maybe operate a call center for another year or something next year. So let me know down below. Whew, this video is long. Thank you for sticking around to the end. I ramble a lot. I'm not even going to apologize for it. Um, I could talk about this stuff all, all day. Maybe I'll like do a little podcast where I just talk about this for two hours and you can listen if you're interested in it. But anyway, I'm going to go for now. So until next time, guys, take care.